Today, we're going to have an intimate discussion. <laughs> to start, I invite you to take a big breath and close your eyes. Now imagine that you're stepping out of your shower in your bathroom. You're completely naked. And as you reach for your towel, you look up and you see your naked body in the mirror. And no, it's not all fogged up. <laughs> What's the first thing that you say to yourself when you see your naked body? Now open your eyes <laughs> and hold on to that thought because I want to come back to it. Think about the last time you really looked at yourself naked in a mirror and consider this question. Have you ever looked at your genitals in a mirror? Your penis, your vagina, your testicles, your clitoris, your anus, your vulva? Now that first question of you standing naked in the mirror probably has you blushing a little bit, but that second question probably has you squirming in your seat. <laughs> And why is this? I mean, we look at our faces in a mirror countless times every single day. We spend hundreds of dollars getting our hair cut, colored, and styled, all while looking in a mirror. Mirrors line the walls of our yoga studios and gymnasiums so we can admire our form. Yet, if it's covered by underwear, we don't look at it. The reason is, is we all suffer from something we don't even know we have. It's called sexual shame. Shame about who you want to have sex with, when you want to have sex, how you want to have sex, what do you want to use during sex, how do I look, how do I compare. Ultimately, for all of us, our bodies and our genitals are a source of shame. So what is shame? Well, it's that little voice inside your head that says, I'm too fat. My penis isn't big enough. My vagina isn't tight and it smells funny. Where the hell is my clitoris anyway? <laughs> my balls are saggy and hairy. What does that little voice inside your head do besides make you think you're crazy? That little voice says to you, it keeps you from speaking your truth. Your truth about what you want, what you need, and what you deserve with your partner. Your truth about that true connection. And why do we care about connection? Well, human beings are a craving connection. Just look at the success of social media. Connection allows us to know that we're not alone, that there are other people out there celebrating and suffering just like we are. Connection binds us together and allows us to experience each other at higher levels. So what did you say to yourself when you saw your naked body in the mirror? And where did that voice come from? That voice comes from many places. Human beings start off as naturally curious. You may not know that fetuses actually touch their genitals in utero. You probably know that infants and toddlers explore their genitals in curiosity and self-pleasure. So where did we learn to be so ashamed of this body part? Well, our earliest messages likely come from our parents. When a child is caught touching their genitals, they're sometimes scolded or punished. A parent may think, what will the neighbors think if they catch my daughter with her hands down her pants? <laughs> they may get so worried, off they go to the pediatrician. What's making this happen and please stop it? <laughs> Parents aren't the only authority figures that give us messages of sexual shame. Our sex education these days is oftentimes a message of risk and danger. Even though 90% of the sex we have is for pleasure, nobody ever talks about pleasure. 
Think back to your own sex ed class. Were you taught anything about pleasure? Even today, girls are taught about pregnancy and their periods, and boys are taught about the dreaded swab in the penis. Even those we ask to care for our bodies, our doctors and nurses, they give us messages of sexual shame. I was moved to tears one day when my 43-year-old patient told me about her first gynecologic exam. She had been suffering from painful sex her entire life. The doctor said to her, clearly there is something wrong with you. Get dressed, get yourself together, and come back when you're ready. Her message at age 23, I am so broken. Even places we seek connection, our church, our faith, our religion, give us messages of shame. Those can include things like birth control is wrong, the only proper sex is between a man and a woman, and sex is only for procreation. All religions have different views about sex and sexuality. And I'm not here to say that they're right or wrong. I'm just asking you to be curious about where your own views come from. Some of the most personal and painful messages of sexual shame come from each other, our peers. We've all heard somebody say, look at that guy driving that Ford Raptor pickup truck. He must be compensating for a small penis. <laughs> or check her out. Who does she think she is wearing a dress like that? She must really be a slut. Look at the world around us where sex is used to sell everything from candy to car tires. And yet, we can't even look at ourselves naked in the mirror. I see this shame dialogue play out in women of every age, every day. The things that I see vary from not knowing the names of their body parts to never having had an orgasm and faking it to now I have genital herpes and I can't be sexual. And even though women don't look at their vulva, they're obsessed with it. There is a procedure that has become popular amongst women of all ages. It's called the Barbie. Yep, women are chipping and chopping away at their vulva in search of perfection. Now, Ken and Barbie may be perfect, but I can promise you the sex that they're having is pretty terrible. <laughs> And we've all looked at Ken and Barbie, but have we really looked at ourselves? It seems like we know shame better than we know our own bodies. But it doesn't have to be this way. We don't have to suffer with sexual shame. We don't have to be afraid of our bodies and self-pleasure. Sexual shame is not inevitable. We don't know everything, but we can certainly learn. And it may all start with a handheld mirror. Look at yourself. Get to know what you look like. We could all pick our face out of a lineup. <laughs> could you pick your penis or your vulva out of a lineup? <laughs> no handheld mirror? I bet you have a handheld device. <laughs> so take a genital selfie. Zoom in on it. Not coordinated enough? Get your partner to take one. And make sure you delete these pictures when you're done so they don't end up on Instagram. Once you know what you look like, be able to name your parts properly. Say them without giggling or stammering. It's okay to have pet names for your parts. Just make sure you know what the right ones are. I read an article in an international magazine titled 13 Women Get Real About Their Vaginas. 
While I'm thrilled an international magazine is getting real about women's vaginas, I was disappointed to learn the entire article was about how they feel about their vulva and their labias. So it looks like naming genitals can be confusing. So let's clear this one up. <laughs> Everything on the outside, that's called the vulva. It's like the face of your genitals. And the tube that leads further in, that's called the vagina. And men, you have a glorious penis and testicles. Look at them in different angles. <laughs> See them hard and soft. <laughs> you too have muscles of the pelvic floor and if you learn to exercise them, you can have longer and harder erections. <laughs> Men, do you know where your prostate can be stimulated? Once you know what you look like, figure out what touch feels good, what touch you want more of, and maybe what touch not so much and get really brave, brave and share this with your partner. If you and your partner can have a discussion about what you want sexually, what else can you talk about? Finances, in-laws? <laughs> Honey, I really don't like your meatloaf. <laughs> so now, let's learn to be better lovers. Research shows that most women learn their sexual information from their partners, and most men learn their sexual information from pornography. <laughs> While porn can be fun, it's not reality, and we want reality. Reality is that moment when you're lying in your lover's arms, and you have just had a mind-blowing orgasm and your connection meter is jumping off the charts. What can good sex do besides dial up your connection meter? Well, it can lower your risk of cancer and heart disease. It can improve your sleep and your mood. It can make you look younger, and it can give you self-confidence. Sex sounds like the best <laughs> drug ever. <laughs> Becoming a better lover requires some curiosity. A few years ago, I stumbled across a podcast called Speaking of Sex with the Pleasure Mechanics. Even I, as a sex expert, learned things from their amazing and open discussions about sex. Now, you know your body, you've shared it with your lover. What about your kids? Nearly every sexual message our children receive from infancy to adolescence is a negative sex message. You now have the incredible opportunity to shed the shame cycle by teaching your children about their bodies, how they work, and how they can one day have amazing sex lives. And so can you. Sex is about intimacy and sensuality. Sensuality is about our senses. Oftentimes, during sex, we turn off the lights, we close our eyes, we shut our mouth, and then we do one of the most intimate things you can do with another human being. <laughs> turn on the lights, open your eyes, and tell your partner what you really want. Thank you.